An entitled Karen demands that she be allowed to cut in line at my customer service job, claiming that her needs are more important than all the customers ahead of her, and she even goes as far as asking me if I know who her husband is. And with all things considered, I'm honestly still blown away by her entitlement, but I'm also so incredibly satisfied by the way that she got shut down. Here's what happened. Okay, so this actually happened about 20 years ago, but for some reason it popped into my head, so I simply had to share it. When my now ex-husband was stationed at an Air Force Base along the Gulf Coast, I worked in the layaway, customer service, catalog order, and gift wrapping department at the back of the base exchange there and had already been there for over a year. I was very well liked by both my coworkers and supervisors. Usually at this department, it's just kind of a walk in and get what you need as it's usually not a super busy department. However, beginning not long after Halloween and on into the new year, it gets horribly busy. And at that point, it was required by everybody to pull a number from the ticket dispenser at the entryway of the department. Once the holiday season began, this was absolutely a hard, fast rule no matter what. Anyways, one weekend day, we were wall-to-wall filled with people, and from the moment we opened the registers, we were just really busy. It got so bad that we had to call a couple people over from other departments for the sole purpose of ringing through layaways, just so a couple people in our department could do nothing but gift wrap and grab layaways from the back that were being paid for in full. And I was one of the people at the register that was doing payments on layaways. I'm waiting on a customer when I happen to glance up and see a woman walk through the entryway and come straight to my register. No number grab, no nothing. She just walked straight up to me and interrupted me with a customer I was currently assisting. She said to me, you need to help me immediately. I'm in a rush and I can't wait very long. So I look at her and I say, ma'am, while I can't appreciate that, everyone here has somewhere else they'd like to be. If you would just grab a ticketed number, I can help you in just a moment. And before I could even continue, this lady interrupts me and says, I don't have time for that. You need to assist me right now. At this point, I'd finish up with the customer I was helping, and I turned to click on the now being served sign to rotate to the next numbered customer that I was going to help. I said out loud that I can help customer 75 next. Well, this entitled Karen was now turning purple. She was so mad. She looked at me and said, excuse me, you need to help me now. Do you know who my husband is? I responded by saying, well, unless he's number 75, it doesn't really really matter. Now, as if this isn't enough of a mic drop, this is where it gets really good. She's now apocalyptic and demands to speak to my manager, which you know what? Fair enough. Let's go get her from the back where she's pulling layaways out and counting cash to be deposited in the main safe because our registers are getting full just to come up and speak with you, lady. I look to my supervisor and I paraphrase and I say, this customer walked in, they didn't take a number and then they came right to my register. She then demanded that I take her ahead of a couple dozen customers who were patiently waiting and I asked her to pull a number, but she refused and then asked me if I knew who her husband was. Now, I should tell you, I told her unless it was number 75, it didn't really matter. Well, my supervisor comes out to the register and walks up to the woman. She says to her, ma'am, I'm this employer's supervisor and she tells me that you'd like to talk to me. This entitled Karen then tries to respond to my supervisor, but my supervisor held up her hand and cut this Karen off. She says to her, ma'am, I'd love to help you right this second, but as you can see, we are very busy. If you could just pull a number, I'll speak with you when it's your turn. And at that, my supervisor turned around and walked back to the back to pull more layaways out. Now, I wish I could describe the range of emotions that this customer experienced before she finally turned on her heels and left in a huge huff. Then, to add insult to injury, just as the woman was departing, another customer, who I have no idea why, said loud enough for the room to hear, yeah, get back to us when your husband is more than a lieutenant. And honestly, that was really the best customer service day I've ever experienced in my life. Wow, that really is super embarrassing for that Karen, because they thought they could throw around their weight somehow and be like, do you know who my husband is? But in reality, they're just super entitled and they're acting like an idiot for literally no reason. Like, this all could have been avoided if they just had some kind of, like, common courtesy and just follow the rules in front of them. I also love it how these customers walk into a store, by the way, and then act as if whatever they're going through is some kind of, like, actual emergency. As if them buying a gift for somebody is some kind of like actual emergency that needs to be addressed right now and before all the other people that showed up on time. So good for you and your supervisor for not taking any of this Karen's garbage because the way she was acting was super entitled and it's honestly so cool to see that your supervisor has your back. If you like Am I the Jerk you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also go to amithejerk.com submit if you would like to submit your own 
own stories. An entitled jerk demands that we follow the contract that we have set up with their company. But even though we try to work with them to give them a better deal outside of what the contract says, they demand that we follow it exactly, as they feel we haven't been holding up our end of the bargain. So we decide to maliciously comply, and as a result, this company ends up having to pay 25% more money on services rendered by my company. And I've honestly never felt better about maliciously complying in my life. Here's what happened. So I work as an account manager for a food distribution company. I have an NDA, so I can't disclose the type of materials or the type of project. So that will have to be relatively vague, but the story is still good. So we work with a chain account and service all of their locations in our state. This is a relatively small but global chain that is historically very challenging to work with. Management is aggressive, pushy, and not very nice. And our company is a tiny, family-owned and operated company full of really nice goofballs. We don't take things too seriously, we provide great service, and we put up with, honestly, way too much from them. We're their contracted distributor. And there are a few items in the contract that no one follows and hasn't followed for several years. One of those being monthly pricing audits. No one from their corporate had ever asked for it, but we never brought it up because our pricing is not always consistent with the contracted price we are supposed to charge the locations. Reason being is that we're often able to get a product for cheaper elsewhere and also sell it to our other accounts outside of this chain. So to put it simply, we're not always compliant, but it's always for the benefit of the customer. Well, our direct contact at the company quit and the head honcho over there stepped in to take over. He insisted that we begin sending monthly pricing audits per the contract. Now, mind you, this guy is just nasty. I mean, I've had to drive around to every location in the state to recover a product the locations use less than one case a year of because they wanted to teach us a lesson for running out of something one time. They assigned us complaint forms that I have to go into their site and resolve the complaint. And it's usually just about something really stupid and monotonous. So anyways, we dragged out the audits for a while, but we were just unable to avoid it. So we brought up another item in the contract that had been neglected in some kind of attempt to be like, look, if you're going to enforce this, we're going to enforce the entire contract. Now, for reference, it is stated in the contract that if we're carrying an item for this account that moved less than a certain number of cases a year, then we're able to charge a storage fee per month that it sat in our warehouse. And even after we gave that example, they said, yes, we need to follow the contract 100%. So that's when we decided, okay, I guess we're going to maliciously comply. We found that almost 90% of the products did not move the required number of cases a year and were eligible for a storage fee to be added on. The language of the contract also stated that we were able to back charge for the months that it sat in the warehouse that we did not charge storage for, which meant that there were items that had been price increased to about $30 per case. And let me just tell you, at that price, that is absolutely ridiculous. Especially for a restaurant in our state. We alerted the company and we said, hey, while this would be good money for us, we really don't want to do that to our customers. They said that it didn't matter and we had to follow the contract. And that if any stores complained, I was to send them directly to their corporate rep. So the contract pricing went into effect, effectively bumping up pricing on their most popular items by about 10% and the storage pricing by about 30% on their lowest moving items, increasing the overall pricing by about 25%. Well, as you can probably guess, the stores are livid. It totally sucks for them and I feel super badly about it, but it's the result of their corporate being absolute jerks. The best part is that now I get these complaint things about pricings all day long and I just get to tag their corporate representatives to deal with it instead. And now, as a result, I have less work and we make about 25% more off of an account, which really worked out for us in the end. Wow, the company these people had to work with are complete morons. Here you have like this fantastic deal going on for your company, and then you decide, oh, let's screw it up by following the contract specifically. Like everybody was acting in good faith, and the fact that they wanted to abide by this contract so fully literally cost them 25% more money. Like that is just so stupid, and honestly, it's so self-inflicted. Like did they not think to pull out a calculator and be like, okay, maybe we shouldn't do it this way? Because seriously, that's all they had to do instead of turning into this massive jerk and being like, oh, we got to follow the contract. So honestly, with all things considered, good for you for getting this price increase and for following the contract because these morons literally just gave you a free paycheck and that mess up doesn't fall on anybody except for that company. Am I the jerk for taking back my request for my mom to walk me down the aisle? Because right now she has betrayed my trust by trying to include my stepdad. And at this point, I'm super
super angry and I now don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so my fiance and I thought it would be sweet if we were both walked down the aisle by our parents at our wedding. For her, that's both of her moms. And for me, that's just my mom. I lost my dad 11 years ago when I was 14 years old. My mom was thrilled when I asked her and told me that she was so excited to walk her baby boy down the aisle. Well, the problem came in when she told her husband that I wanted them to walk down the aisle. Not just her, like I explicitly stated, but her and her husband, who has never been my parental figure and only came into my life as an adult. He was excited about the prospect as well, and he called me up and told me he was glad I was finally letting him step into the role of a father figure because he always wanted kids, and he was so proud to have a son. Now, I have no idea where this came out of, so I asked what he meant by that, and he said the fact that I wanted my mom and him to walk me down the aisle meant I was embracing him as a parent as well. Well, I told him that I had not asked the both of them and that I just asked my mom, but he acted like I had never even spoke. So I called my mom and I asked where he got the idea that I had asked him. And she told me she hadn't seen it as a big deal because they're married and he's a good man. And surely I want him to be my grandpa to my future kids. So including him in this shouldn't be such a big deal. I told her it is a big deal because he is not my parent. And if anyone was going to walk with us, it would be dad, but he's not here. And because he's not here, I don't want anyone else. I then told her that she needed to clear things up with her husband and she told me no. She said that she would not crush him and I could just man up and allow him the joy of experiencing this with us. I told her I was not going to walk down the aisle with the two of them but she told me it was too late to back out now and what harm would it do anyways? She told me it would crush him to have it taken back but I told her he blatantly ignored me when I already told him and she defended it by saying he was excited and wanted to be included. I then told her I wouldn't walk with her if she didn't fix this and she told me that I had to walk with her. I already asked and she already accepted, which is right when I told her that if that was her stance then I was taking back the offer for her and she could figure out what to tell the man that she married. Well, everything just broke loose at that moment and she told me I was behaving like a child and excluding a good man for no good reason as well as punishing her for trying to be a good wife. So I'm honestly at such a loss right now and I seriously don't know what to do. First of all, I don't think you're the jerk at all, because I think what you did really was a sweet gesture, but she went behind your back and completely messed it all up. She invited her husband to walk with you down the aisle, all while definitely knowing, by the way, that she was the only one invited. Like, it is ignorant for her to be like, oh yeah, you made the both of us, didn't you? When it's like, nope, he very clearly said, no, I just want my mom to walk me down the aisle. And the fact that she's not willing to correct this situation and almost make it seem like, ooh, now you're gonna be forced to do it. As if she's like, caught you in the act and like you can't go back now, that in my opinion is like a massive red flag and I would not put up with that for a second. Like that is so toxic, it's not even funny. So no, I don't blame you for backing out of this and saying, nope, you're definitely not walking me down the aisle because your mom is acting super entitled and super toxic. And if I was in your shoes, I would feel the exact same way. Today, I messed up by confessing to my coworker that I liked her. And as a result, I've completely ruined my peace at work and I now seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so this started one month ago. I have a co-worker, let's call her Anna, that's not her real name, and ever since she joined our team two years ago, we gradually became closer to the point where everyone else would tell us when we would start dating. In the past, she tried to get my attention, but at the time, I was interested in another girl, so nothing came from that. Eventually, she got a boyfriend, and we stayed as really good friends. Then, I was rejected by the other girl, and in the following months, I started to develop feelings for Anna. But because she had a boyfriend, I didn't tell her about how I felt. On December last year, she broke up with her now ex. Later on, I was told by her close friend that he had been awful to her and she was depressed and went to therapy. I stayed with her, giving her support, but still didn't tell her about how I felt because I believed it was not the right time to do so. She has come a long way and she seems happier than before. So, four weeks ago, I took my chance and I finally told her about how I felt. She thanked me but told me that she couldn't give me an answer and didn't feel ready to be in another relationship yet. I told her that I understood and that she didn't need to feel pressured because of my confession. We hugged and I told her that I hoped that at least our relationship could stay the same. But then, the following week, she started avoiding me. Whenever I tried to talk with her, she would only reply with yes or no answers, never try to keep the conversations going, and would act like I just don't exist. I tried to talk with her multiple times, but she would only tell me that everything was okay. And finally, I got tired and stopped trying to talk with her and would only greet her in the mornings. We stayed like that for one more week 
until she suddenly approached me and started cracking jokes like nothing had ever happened. I didn't immediately start talking to her again, but whenever she talked to me, I would answer her politely. I thought that maybe things would start to change, but out of nowhere, another male co-worker started flirting with her, and if he tells a joke, she laughs. If he speaks with her, she follows his topics, and even though she talks to me now again, it just hasn't been the same. Now, because of this, I have to see how this other dude flirts with her, and she actually corresponds with him. This is destroying me every single day, and it's becoming incredibly depressing. I don't know what I did wrong, but now I have to see them interact every day, and it's just so painful. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have told her anything, so I'm not really sure what to do, but I feel like I messed up by confessing my feelings. Yeah, confessing your feelings to someone you like at work is really a gamble, because either it works out and you guys have a great relationship, or it doesn't work out and something like this happens. And sure, in my opinion, you really should not try to date people that you also work with, unless you're 100% sure that it's not going to ruin everything you have going on at work. Because from the sounds of it, it really seems like everything's awkward now, and hopefully it gets better sooner than later. Am I the jerk for calling out my male co-worker after he referred to me as his work wife? Because right now, I'm getting grilled by my boss, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so for a bit of information, I'm a 26-year-old woman living in the United States. I've been working as a data entry clerk, and it's a decent job with a decent pay, and I don't live too far from it. It's a 15-minute drive to and from work. I've been working for a year now, and I get along with my other co-workers, although I am reserved, and other than the four female co-workers that I'm close with and hang out with at lunch, I mostly talk to other co-workers about the work at hand. But sometimes we do have to collaborate with other co-workers, and lately, I've been collaborating with this one male co-worker who I will refer to as Albert. Albert is not his real name. Since I work with him a lot, I am polite to him, but I only talk to him about the work at hand and nothing else, even though he tries to talk about other things that have nothing to do with the job, and occasionally will ask me remotely personal questions, such as what's my nationality, what's my religion, when am I ever going to have kids, and what do I think about the president. Now, I either decline to answer those types of questions, or I give him one-word answers. But at the end of last week on Friday, when I showed up that morning, I overheard him say, oh, here comes my work wife. Now, I thought that was very stupid, and I went to him directly, and I firmly said, excuse me, but that was very inappropriate. He responded by saying, wow, calm down. I responded by saying, no, no, don't ever refer to me as your work wife again. When you refer to me, I don't want to hear the word wife. I don't even want to hear the word buddy. We aren't friends. We are co-workers. Point blank. Well, when I said that to Albert, he was mortified and he walked away. And everyone that was in the room just laughed at him. Now, he was shocked because I am Samoan and most of us Samoan women tend to be friendly and we are kind of soft when we speak and he never really approached the other female co-workers that I'm close with because they seem less approachable. They have this resting face when they are working and they have a no nonsense, no BS personality. At the beginning of this week, my boss called me into his office and said that I was extremely mean to Albert, but I told him that Albert shouldn't refer to me as a work wife as I find that term extremely unprofessional. But my boss argued with me that this is normal when a woman and a man work together and the other women don't have a problem with it, but I insisted that he doesn't refer to me as a work wife as I find this term ridiculous. Now, to be fair, my boss did tell me that he gave Albert grief, but he also said that I should have taken Albert into a private room instead of calling him out in front of the other co-workers. And ever since then, Albert has been very cold to me. But frankly, I just don't care. I talked to my husband about this, and he said that I did not overreact. But my sisters told me I didn't have to humiliate Albert in front of the other co-workers. So honestly, am I the jerk for giving grief to this male co-worker after he referred to me as his work wife? Because honestly, at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. No, you are definitely not the jerk here. Seriously, what Albert did is completely inappropriate. Let's kind of go through the listing of what's really going on here, first and foremost, because it seems like Albert was already crossing some weird line to begin with. Now, I'm not opposed to getting to know co-workers, but it seems like from the beginning of you two working together, he clearly was not picking up on the hints that you did not want to talk about personal stuff. You clearly come to work to get stuff done and then go home. You're not interested in being this guy's friend and despite you giving one word answers and all this other stuff to basically show that you're not interested in him, he still did not get the picture. And if I'm being completely honest, that's you being as nice as possible. Because after he decided to call you his work wife in front of everybody, in my opinion, the gloves are completely off. Because I'm right there with the original poster. This is so unbelievably inappropriate.
it, it's not even funny. Because if you're going to call somebody your work wife, then you had better be on really good terms with them and they better be your like best friend at work and call you their work husband. Because if not, this is like a harassment case waiting to happen. And it's completely justified. Like this guy called you out in front of everybody. He said, oh, here comes my work wife. Like I can only imagine how that would make me feel if I had seriously in private made it very clear and obvious that I'm not interested in being friends with this guy like in the slightest. Only for him to then like publicly try to like humiliate me in front of everybody. No, I don't think so. That is definitely not going to happen. So if this guy was to call you out and call you his work wife in public, then you have every right to defend your good name and call this guy out in public and be like, no, you don't. Don't ever talk to me like that again. Like, why should you have to spare Albert's feelings? But he doesn't have to spare your feelings by making some weird, like subtle advance at you. Because in my opinion, that's exactly what's going on here. This was not a mutual thing that you both agreed upon. And this is not something that you felt comfortable with. So in my opinion, I definitely think you are not the jerk. And I think you are completely justified for putting this guy in his place. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.